An amazing, amazing performance. I, I, I... Cagnus Marlson barrels into the game with pawn to d4. His young opponent, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, plays knight to f6, does so with a winnie as the top professionals do when they develop their horses and we've got the start of an epic blitz game. It's the super bet, Rapid and Blitz, played early May 2024 and I'm sorry, end of an era, we're at the final video in this playlist of incredible games where Magnus did some special stuff. Check out the playlist, more on that in the video to come, let's dive in. Magnus goes prawn to c4, the most explosive move. He says on guard as he goes, e6 from Prague, nice and steady, looking for bishop b4, so Magnus goes knight f3. So many top guys avoid the mainline Nimzo Indian. What does Prague do? He checks anyway. This is the Bogo Indian. Most top GMs pull this face when they do it. This is what Prague did, of course. Magnus blocks with the knight. That's a bit of a traffic jam there. We get castles and a3, looking to relieve the jam. What do you want to do with that bishop? To be or not to be, that is the question. Prague decides not to be. Why is he giving up his bishop pair? That's like a minor exchange. Well, look at those ones. They're a bit hemmed in for now. Prague, the lead in development, and d5. He strikes while the iron is hot. His king's safe, fighting for the centre. Magnus goes e3, and the bishop on c1 is crying in this pawn structure. b6 from Prague. He builds the banana hammock. Which piece will he fee in Keto? All to be revealed. Magnus goes full b3 cowboy and bishop to b7. Sanity prevails. The sniper hits the diagonal. Magnus goes bishop to b2. Those ones crossing swords. Not to be outdone. And knight bd7. Prague does an extra loud neigh like a horse. Those two reunited. These ones here. Connected. Working together. And Magnus now goes bishop e2 and Prague says aha take on me I will because now you have to waste the tempo is he now going to shatter the structure give up his second bishop force Magnus to compromise the pawn structure have the double f's well no he doesn't he plays the best move and it's prawn to c5 here. The c prawn fighting for the center, and surely it's a bad move. White can take right, open up the bishop. Well, if you do, you do give this knight a square. That's the thing. So Magnus first goes queen to e2, perhaps anticipating knight e4, maybe clearing the d file in some lines, setting up a queen and bishop battery. Who knows? That's why I'm sat here. He's sat there with a brain as big as Jupiter, and now we see captures on d4 if you take with the pawn yes you keep this knight out of c5 you control e5 but you don't open your bishop so magnus reunites the clergyman look at them there like rowers in an oar boat or rowing boat however you say that and a6 now played b5 on the way now we see queen b2 great move anticipating b5 and before it's played prague goes for this one Given the second bishop, are you not opening Magnus for a massive attack on your king? Well, here's Prague's point. Queen e7 played, and he wants e5 to blunt the dark squared bishop. You can go f4 to fight against it. Still black can renew. It's on the way. But instead, Magnus plays a move, looks kind of strange. He castles the king onto the open file. Yes, he connects the rooks, but that's drafty. It's dangerous. We see b5 for the high five. Kasparov runs over, gives Prague one. Now we see bishop e2. Why didn't it go to d3? Well, f4 could be on the way. Bishop f3, hit the long diagonal. e5 now comes. This bishop dropping back. Knight d5, Prague with this initiative in compensation for the bishops. Magnus saves it with bishop a5, and now queen e6. Nice move, coming onto the light squares, looking to attack the king. Rook a c1 from Magnus, he fights for the file. And now these are some of the top moves from Prague, but I hate what he plays here. Not this one, sorry. Need to stop letting my cat prepare the arrows before the games. You can get out, you're not allowed to watch anymore. Why should you play like this? Well, it allows you to start attacking that white king. You can even look for some f5 stuff. But what does Prague do? He goes rook a to c8 here. 
offering an exchange of these. Magnus gleefully accepts, the second rook captures, this one comes to the C file, and we see all four cannons leave the board. This favours Magnus, no longer can his king be so exposed, the Napoleonic Wars over before they even began, what a terrible film that was, Ridley Scott, we're not angry, we're just disappointed, and now because there's this threat to check on C8, that's why we see knight E7, covering the square, but but queen c7. What an invasion. That queen skewering those pieces on the kebab, preparing to grill. Even ladies do the barbecue these days sometimes. Modern world and queen d8 check is a threat. Best way to respond, pawn h6. But not played. g6 was played. Why is this so much worse? Well, you've taken away the checking square of the queen. You can't form the right angled triangle. Pythagoras rolling in his grave and Magnus pounces with pawn to a4. Excellent move. Best response is the immediate knight d5. But Prague naturally takes here. He doesn't want Magnus to take. Win a pawn, but Stockfish getting excited. What an advantage now after bishop to c4. Cutting down the diagonal and the queen's overloaded, protecting the knights. You know, if you move here or here or here to try and stay with this knight, then there's a check. This king goes and you pick up a loose knight big problems. So that's why we see the move of knight to d5, intercepting the attack and hitting the queen here. Magnus with a pleasant choice. Where does he check? He goes from c8, computer preferred d8, both good moves, king g7 from Prague, he's so low on time here, and surely you go e4. Use the pin, then win this one. Well, not so good. Knight e7 comes, you counterattack the queen, and even though you can win a queen and a knight in that line, there's some ninja stuff where black gets a pass pawn rolling, supported by the knight, doing quite well. So not played by Magnus, he keeps it simple, takes on a4, makes a gobble gobble noise, now we see queen d6 breaking the pin and he picks up a second pawn with a huge gobble, kind of like when you're taking a massive bite out of a triple stacked burger, that's how it went down, queen attacked, Prague doesn't want to exchange, he blocked with one of the knights, hits this bishop, there is a threat to take because then you'd be defending the queen, so the bishop drops back to e2, we get queen c5 looking for some invasion down here and Magnus now offers the exchange once again, he's itching, he's twitching, he loves getting the queens off the board, Prague doesn't allow it, hits this bishop here but simple stuff now from Magnus, don't get too attached to one advantage, he gives up the bishop pair, Knight recaptures, why? Well, he's about to win a pawn. Don't take the knight, still winning, but then the bishop drops. Instead, we see takes here with check. The king moves back, and there's a threat now to check, win the knight. But again, the bishop drops. So Magnus saves it with bishop to b5. Renews the threat of winning the knight. So this queen drops back to cover the square, but a5 and where to go. There's so few squares. We see a check tried by Prague. King g2 played. Now knight c8. That square vacated, but bishop d7 brought resignation. Because the knight's under fire and the queen is threatening to check, win the knight, there's too many problems, the a pawn's running, here we see that resignation. How about that for a strong female lead? Modern screenwriters loving it. An amazing, amazing performance. I, 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 10 in a row, I mean, you're crazy. And here's what Magnus did in this tournament. This is what all the buzz was about. 10 games in a row, unprecedented, blitz wins against Super Grandmasters. What a tournament. I hope you enjoyed. Check out the whole playlist on screen if you want to see these incredible games. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.